Good evening, everyone. A very warm welcome to all of you joining us today. Thank you for being a part of this special session focusing on sciences at Ashoka. So whether you are a high school student eager to explore our academic options, a parent interested in understanding your child's potential educational journey, or a teacher seeking insights into guiding your students or anyone else from the relevant community, we are thrilled to have you with us. So today's session uh, will provide a unique opportunity to engage directly with Ashoka's distinguished faculty members. Whether you are curious about our majors and minors, intrigued by our faculty's cutting-edge research, interested in learning more about uh, the student research projects, or simply want to understand our teaching methodologies or any other aspect of Ashoka's undergraduate program, this session is uh, tailor-made for you. So I'm Yukti, overseeing academic communications work at Ashoka University. Before joining Ashoka, I finished my PhD from Tata Institute of Fundamental Research. So I'm a chemist by training, and I'll be your host for today. So although Ashoka builds its capabilities based on the undergraduate educational requirements, it does not compromise on the research competencies of the faculty. They are capable enough to work uh, individually or as a team to solve crucial problems in their respective research domains. Joining us today are Ashoka faculty members representing three diverse yet connected majors offering uh, offered at Ashoka. So let's welcome our speakers for uh, this evening. We have with us Professor Shivani Krishna, she's the faculty of biology at Ashoka University uh, and a PhD from Indian Institute of Science, Education and Research, Tiruvananthapuram. Shivani subsequently pursued her postdoctoral research at uh, University of Haifa, Israel. Uh, her work was funded by Israel Science Foundation focused on learning complex flower morphologies by bumblebees. So at Ashoka, Shivani is working on plant-animal interactions and plant reproductive ecology in the evolutionary unique freshwater swamp forests in the Western Ghats. So thank you for joining us today, Shivani. Uh, next up, we have with us uh, Professor Vidya Avasare. She is the faculty of chemistry at Ashoka University and a PhD from IIT Bombay. Vidya is a very popular chemistry teacher at both the undergraduate as well as postgraduate levels. She has been awarded with the prestigious National Teachers Award uh, from Nas Indian National Science Academy in uh, New Delhi. She is a synthetic chemist uh, working in the field of catalysis and computational catalysis, trying to address the problems of carbon dioxide capture, hydrogen production and more. Uh, thank you, uh, Professor Vidya, for joining us today. Uh, next, uh, we have with us Professor Sushmita Saha. She is a faculty of physics at Ashoka. Sushmita uh, did her PhD from SN Bose National Center for Basic Sciences and subsequently pursued her postdoctoral research at ETH Zurich, Switzerland. And her second stint of postdoc was at Uppsala University in Sweden. Her post postdoctoral research has been funded by some of the prestigious uh, funding agencies. So Sushmita is uh, an experimental physicist uh, studying spin wave dynamics in various magnetic nanostructures and thin films. This will have applications in developing technology, which is faster, more efficient, and environmental friendly. Thank you so much, Sushmita, for joining us today. And before we begin, I would like to inform our audience that the applications for round three of the undergraduate program are now open and the deadline for the same is 12th of April 2024. Please note that you do not have to wait for your class 12 board marks or CUET to apply. You can get a confirmed offer of admission and financial aid even before your uh, final board exams uh, uh, or results are announced. So now here is how we'll take today's session forward. All three faculty members will share an insights in, uh, insight into their respective departments at Ashoka. And this will be followed by uh, the general question and answers. Uh, on that note, without further, uh, further ado, let's get started. Uh, I will request Professor Shivani Krishna to talk about the offerings of the biology department. On that note, over to you, Shivani. Thank you, Yukti. I'll just start sharing my screen. Sure. Thank you all for joining today's session and thank you so much Yukti for introducing. So I'll just quickly uh, summarize uh, how an Ashoka biology experience is going to be like when you join the undergraduate program here. So I'll start off with a little bit of introduction about sciences in general and uh, then move on to what the undergraduate program structure is and how our department is structured in general. So as we all know Ashoka 
is built on the foundation of liberal arts education and liberal arts education itself is the main foundation or the aim of liberal arts education is to cultivate uh, sort of mind and character, right? So that is, uh, and also provide a holistic learning to students. So students at Ashoka begin by sort of querying growth of human civilization, growth of uh, how humans started asking questions. And also, uh, they're also taught to look at interdependence between sciences and creative thinking and also uh, humanities. So uh, an important example of how this interdependence between sciences and various other fields works cannot be better illustrated with uh, an example that we all are very familiar with, that is the COVID pandemic, right? So pandemic, we've seen how a virus that most biologists have been studying for years has sort of... Uh, created this havoc across the world. And in order to understand how this virus multiplies, of course, it's important that biologists uh, work, but it is also important to know how human movement patterns are, how their cultures are, and what kind of economies that they are living in. And solutions, of course, require a combination of environmental health, human health, and animal health to come together. So uh, biology cannot function in silos, and we really require uh, support from both economists or social scientists and political scientists to actually deal with a situation like a pandemic. Right. So because understanding how the virus works is not sufficient to develop solutions that would help uh, several lakhs of humans recover from this situation. So that's precisely where the Department of Biology has its foundations. That is, we uh, sort of engage or uh, promote intellectual curiosity and interdisciplinary thinking. So biology, as we know, is the science of life and the Department of Biology is structured in such a way that there are faculty that work on single cells. We have faculty that look at tissue level, individual organisms and also forest ecosystems. So we span across scales from molecules to ecosystems and the faculty are engaged in asking and answering questions that are fundamental to life and living. We have those that look at how did life originate? Can we create a synthetic cell? Why do organisms age? And can we understand evolutionary processes that are involved in aging? How do insects communicate with each other? And how do organisms develop from a single cell? Right. So these are very fundamental questions that are important for life and living. Apart from that, we also look at some of the very current issues, such as how do how does antimicrobial resistance evolve and how can we uh, sort of fight this antimicrobial resistance, right? So precisely in order to uh, sort of uh, work in this framework, Trivedi School of Biosciences was set up, which sort of bridges the gap between science and society. There are several thematic centers that are under the umbrella of Trivedi School of Biosciences, such as the Center for Health Analytics Re and Research and Trends, Center for Glycans and Metabolic Programming, Koita Center for Digital Health, and so on. So all of these are in engaged in using approaches such as machine learning, artificial intelligence, and bringing holistic health to humans, right? What we know about health, combining that with, let's say, nutrition, and combining that with what kind of uh, uh, sort of precis precision techniques we have for monitoring different health parameters. So bringing all this data together, analyzing it and developing solutions or health monitoring options uh, are the sort of focal areas of some of these centers. So using this, where we have this combination of fundamental questions that are being addressed and those that are more sort of bridging the gap between science and society, together come under Trivedi School of Biosciences. And we have a, a distinguished advisory board. We have one Nobel laureate, Jack Zostak, on board. And they advise time to time on the functioning of the department and the school. And coming to the structure of the department, we have faculty spanning a wide variety of research areas. They come from diverse academic backgrounds. And more or less, and they fall under the broad five thematic areas, which are behavior, ecology, and evolutionary biology. We have those faculty 
faculty who work in the areas of biophysics, biochemistry, immunology, which all of us know is very important today to understand how diseases progress, cell developmental biology, and we have faculty working in the area of neuroscience and computational biology. So broadly, the faculty's interests lie in these areas. So the best part about having such a diverse uh, academic background and research areas is students can learn from faculty who were involved in developing that knowledge. So if there is a faculty who's working in the area of biophysics, they were involved in generating some of the new knowledge that we teach students, right? So this is uh, important in order for them to know because biology is so uh, evolving so rapidly, the knowledge uh, is also sort of the textbooks become very outdated and we even have to teach time to time from research papers even at the very beginning undergraduate levels, right? So that is important to have a strong uh, research uh, based faculty to give education that is uh, sort of more updated. So overall, I want to just quickly put on a few points on why Ashoka Biology is unique. One of the key things, as I said, is the department strongly encourages an inter interdisciplinary research environment. And we have multiple examples. I'll share a couple of examples a little later. So uh, interdisciplinary research environment and a lot of students learn by doing. Right? So which is where they do experiments on the conceptual concepts that they've learned in the class. So we've sort of come up with our curriculum and entire syllabus that's not very traditionally content driven, but more concept based and inquiry driven kind of uh, syllabus. And as I said, the faculty have diverse expertise and come from various academic backgrounds. We also have uh, weekly seminars and lectures and conferences that expose students to frontiers of science that are the key developing areas within biology. So this allows them to also know what is happening in different places, what are the different uh, universities across the world working on and what kind of problems or areas within biology that they're working on. And we have state-of-the-art laboratories where uh, we place a lot of emphasis on the laboratory courses because that's where uh, the real learning happens because they learn theory and then they are able to test those concepts in the labs. And they also work on when they join the labs, they become interns, they take up internships in our labs and they work on problems related to, let's say, climate change or infectious diseases. They get a feel of how to address questions in real world. And they're also equipped with strong quantitative and data sciences, sort of knowledge on how to uh, run models, how to analyze data. So we have multiple courses that equip them with this. And specifically, we have, uh, we have designed the structure of undergraduate program in such a way that there are core mandatory courses that span across scales that I've shown earlier. That is, we have courses that start from genetics, cellular biology, to we have physiology, ecology that comes at the more ecosystem and organismal level. And these are the core courses that provide the foundation required for uh, biology in general. And then they can sort of customize their uh, learning by choosing the electives in focal areas or the electives or the areas that they want to uh, pursue their further higher education in. So I'll give you a quick glimpse of some of these very interesting courses that transcend across disciplines. We offer elective courses that are, of course, uh, provide you to get deeper into the subject where we have advanced cellular biology, advanced molecular biology, and so on. But we have very interesting and unique courses. And these are some things that set us apart from any other institution in the country. We have a strong psychology department with whom we work together and offer courses such as neonatal development, evolutionary psychology. Uh, we also have crosstalk with the environmental science departments where we offer together courses such as science society sustainability. We also offer courses such as decoding GM crops, right? So these are those uh, at the sort of at the intersection of biology, environmental science, biology, and psychology. We also have courses that are sort of uh, with history department, we offer archaeology and science. So this is a fascinating area that is uh, studied more and more where how do we understand our past looking at uh, the DNA, 
right? So we have faculty who work in this area and who also teach the course archaeology and science. We have a course history of science and we have a set of very strong quantitative courses such as mathematical and computational biology, bioinformatics, understanding protein structure and function with which is sort of together with the physics and which involves a lot of mathematics as well. So the it's not just the crosstalk between or within sciences that is apart from uh, working together with chemistry, math, physics, and computer science, we also have quite a few courses that are in the humanities such as with history and philosophy. We also have uh, a course philosophy of science. So this allows students to appreciate the interdisciplinary way of thinking. And when students go out, they go out with foundations of biology and also a kind of thinking that allows them or makes them apart from traditional training that other places in India offer, right? So this is about the courses or the kind different kinds of courses that we offer in the undergraduate program. And little bit, I will just summarize my own research, which, in, which involves a bit of interdisciplinary thinking. So as you uh, mentioned in, in the introduction, I work on plant-animal interactions. So broadly, my field is ecology. And I'm curious to know how bees sort of identify flowers. How do they go close to different variety of flowers? How do they navigate in, this, uh, in, in a forest? and do these processes of pollination and how do birds disperse seeds and so on. Now, forest has many, many trees and there are many bee species. So it's important, so it gets very complex to understand. So that's why we use the support of graph theory from mathematics to map these complex interactions. We use a network approach and then try to understand this complexity without which it's simply impossible to look at hundreds and thousands of plant species and the bees that visit these plant species. So apart from this, I also work on uh, social organization and also nesting architecture of bees and wasps. So for something uh, like this, we use principles of physics, a well-known field of topology, some of these principles to understand how their nest construction is and what are the principles of nest construction. Given the sociality involved and uh, the whenever the social organization involved, it's also a lot of humanities lessons that we learn in humanities come into play. That is, we use how uh, principles of economics where the costs and benefits of uh, doing certain tasks are evaluated in social groups, right? So this is how different disciplines come together. In fact, undergraduates come in with different training to the lab. They come in, join the labs and bring in new ideas. So that's how we get into interdisciplinary work uh, most of the time. So Ashoka is specially and uniquely placed in such a way that allows this kind of research. So undergraduate research is crux of so, undergraduate uh, program sorry to itself. Interrupt, uh, Shivani, can we maybe yeah. take another one minute and then yeah, uh, yeah. we'll take more in the question and answers. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank yeah. So in the undergraduate research, uh, we so we've heard students come into the labs and join and so have said that this sort of helped them to gain deeper understanding of what they've learned in the classroom. And not just subject specific skills, but undergraduate research or when they join the labs, they develop a lot of transferable skills that involve communication, that involve teamwork, developing leadership skills. And a lot of these skills can be used in various other things. They learn problem solving, critical thinking, and so on. So we encourage them strongly to join the labs and uh, during the semesters and also during summer and winter breaks. And they also do a full honors thesis at the end of their undergrad, that is in their fourth year. And the labs are open to undergraduates, the faculty, PhD students, all of them work together in the same space. A testimony to that is the number of publications which are driven by undergraduate students. So we have many publications that uh, came out in reputed scientific journals that were driven by undergraduate ideas. So this is simply generating new knowledge and learning truly by doing uh, work or doing research, right? So this provides a summary of how undergraduate research is so important and the important pillar of the department itself. So to some, some of the key opportunities after Ashoka in biology are uh, these, and we can discuss more about these after the uh, session during the Q&A. 
And quickly, where do biology graduates from Ashoka go? So this is our first uh, fifth batch that is going to graduate this year. And we've had students who are taking up diverse uh, careers. Some of them have gone on to become mediators in science galleries. We have those that pursue PhD. We have those that are doing uh, are in corporate sector where they're working in pharma companies. We have those that are in master's program. 80% of the students move on to pursuing a master's. And these are some of the places where they've been. So thank you so much. And uh, thank you so I'll much, Ivani. I think, uh, yeah, I think there are a lot of questions. We'll uh, take them after uh, Professor Vidya and Professor Sushmita's uh, talk. And thank you so much. I think you have covered a lot of ground. So we'll get back to you. Thanks again, uh, Shivani. Um, uh, so I would like to now invite Professor Vidya Avsare to share more details about the chemistry uh, department at Ashoka. So over to you. Yeah, thank you. Is it visible? Yes, yes, perfect. Yeah, thank you. So I must thank Yukti and Shivani for giving the uh, Ms. Shivani. She has uh, discussed much about general science uh, education in Ashoka. Now I will focus on chemistry. Chemistry department is one of the youngest departments in Ashoka. So why chemistry is unique? Wait, let me see. seems to be want to hide this yeah so we currently see uh the slide with two cartoons uh and it's yeah. on the full screen mode but so. yeah full screen mode but uh, it bring this down somewhere or shall i go to um are you on in the presenter's mode? I think you are in the presenter's mode, I guess. Yeah, but thing is that the entire screen is like, a, a, we have some, I don't think you can see entire screen with the, my share, uh, other things like stop video participants. That... No, no, we currently no, see no. how, no, no, it's, uh, Only it's perfect for us. Okay, yes. Then fine. Uh -huh. Okay, then, okay, sorry. Please so go. why chemistry? One of the most important question. So, I feel chemists are magician, chemists are superheroes because they can make the bonds and break the bonds to get new exciting molecules and to materials with fascinating applications. Because what we see today, everything has uh, um, uh, atoms and molecules and we need to know chemistry in deep to make um, novel applications. So when we ask what is the major problem of our society today. Uh, the one and only one answer is global warming and ca carbon mitigation is must. So if you look at uh, CO2, uh, amount of CO2 in at atmosphere, it, it has been ra ra raised to 400, uh, 417 ppm. So if we continue Im uh, emitting this CO2, uh, I don't think we'd survive for next uh, 500 or six, more than 500 or 600 years. So we need to capture CO2, utilize CO2. So this is called a, a circular carbon economy and where uh, chemists play a very significant role because we uh, we can transform uh, this uh, CO2 into uh, beautiful molecules, useful molecules, which can be used as fuel or other uh, applications. Chemist can be, uh, chemistry knowledge can be used to get clean water and uh, so that we can use even uh, sea water can be converted into drinking water. Ke uh, chemists play a crucial role in mental health, cancers and infectious diseases. You all know the significance of remdesivir and other medicines which uh, uh, we use during uh, COVID. Even uh, aspirin, uh, dolo, everyone knows those medicines. So clean air is also important where chemists play a crucial role. Another important problem where chemistry knowledge can be used that clean energy to uh, in every form. 
we can have solar energy, wind energy, geothermal, hydro energy, energy promotion, nuclear energy, biomass, where chemists play a crucial role in every step. Another important problem is uh, lithium uh, ion batteries because uh, lithium has, uh, India has only 14,100 tons of uh, uh, lithium. So we have only option either recycle lithium or replace lithium. Replace re lithium by potassium sodium batteries. There, of course, physicists also work, but chemists also contribute. Chemistry is a wonderful subject because it's biology as well as uh, physics. So depending upon your interest, you can move to uh, you can do chemistry and st start work working in uh, different areas. And, uh, chemists are largely working on dinitrogen activation because most of the energy required for conversion of nitrogen to ammonia, uh, almost 10 to 30% of energy being utilized. So chemists are working whether we can use do such temperature like what plants do. And the next carbon dioxide is, uh, uh, capture and conversion. Now, uh, government, you must have read in the newspaper that the government has started uh, a big mission on green hydrogen production. And we do involve in uh, such uh, activities. We want to produce green hydrogen for our country. So that is one of the... And chemists can contribute effectively to this mission. The next, next important problem is hydrogen storage. Chemists can prepare material transport. So thus we, uh, we can provide solution for clean energy, clean water, clean air and safe medicines. So chemistry is troubleshooter. Now why chemistry department at Ashoka? When we talk about any department, faculty, facilities, and futuristic curricula are important. So faculty make learning joyous, uh, and we have a, a laboratory, excellent laboratory fac facilities for curiosity-driven learning. This syllabus is very futuristic, so to have meaningful learning. We, we are very small department, but uh, with a big potential and uh, big people working on making this department unique uh, in, in Ashoka and in country also. We have Professor Saurapal, uh, th a, a famous theoretical chemist uh, uh, from India. He is our HOD. Then uh, Dr. Munmun Gosh, her interests are also uh, hydrogen, uh, hydrogenation, electrocatalysis, which are very prominent areas of research. Professor Pali is involved in a lot of uh, relativistic couple cluster, theoretical chemistry, computational designing of materials for energy applications. Uh, then uh, we have Deepak Astana, who is interested in synthesis of ideal fluorescent system. You know, must be know, uh, you should know that all these fluorescent compounds are in, uh, necessary for uh, tag, uh, tagging and labeling of uh, biological uh, cells to uh, diagnosis. So the, these fluorescent compounds play a crucial role in diagnosis. Then uh, uh, another theoretical chemist, we have uh, Arya, Dr. Arya Ghush, who is uh, in development of accurate ab initio methods to study various uh, interatomic and intermolecular de decays. So we have Saurabh Chatterjee, who is very much interested in uh, chemical biology and medicinal chemistry and drug development. We have um, uh, Dr. Santu Bera, who is faculty fellow of the department, who is interested in peptide-based uh, uh, piezoelectronics nano generator for nano nanotechnology. So it, it is all about regenerating cells and healing self-healing materials using peptides. So this is me. I'm interested in catalysis, computational models, understanding of complex reaction mechanisms, CO2 capture, CO2 to act activation and CO2 to multi-carbon pro uh, products, green hydrogen production, and we also do machine learning and water remediation. So we have recently published paper uh, on this uh, CO2 to multi-carbon products. So you can see what kind of research I'm doing. To. I'm very much uh, keen in developing green technologies and uh, machine learning models for addressing different uh, uh, problems from chemistry. Like machine learning, uh, here we uh, analyze almost three to four lakhs of uh, catalyst, how we can have better, cal uh, robust catalyst for hydrogen, uh, CO2 activation, hydrogenation of carbon dioxide. So these are our chemistry labs. 
very spacious workplace estated areas group, uh, group wise fume hoods and uh, chemical ca cabinets also so you can see lot of ug uh, lab facilities we have rota vapor then uh, water distillation unit flash column chromatography uh, electrocatalysis uh, setup gcms all our ug students use these facilities in the department spectrophotometer then uh, glow box also to carry reactions under inert atmosphere so that and handle our chemicals which are air sensitive and moisture sensitive under this glow, glow box then we have ftir melting point apparatus carl fisher titrator this is these are the facilities i'm working on different types of chemical reactions electrocatalysis thermal reactions and photochemical reactions and we allow all our undergraduate students to work work with our phd students so these are the courses which offer in chemistry so if you see uh, uh, the majority courses are very new and we are doing it to bridge the gap because when we talk about an nep uh, 2020 uh, so students are we we want to enable our student to go for phd programs directly after completing their uh, undergraduate program so we have introduced courses which can bridge this uh, gap so they they are uh, ready to go for phd programs directly so our syllabus is as good as masters program in any universities in india or abroad and uh, apart from that we have Courses like medicinal chemistry, smart materials, nanomaterials, biophysical chemistry, group theory, quantum mechanics, chemical biology, applications of computational chemistry and computational aspects of drug discovery, electrochemistry and sustainable energy, advances in biochemistry, industrial chemistry, or organometallics. I think we are the first department where undergraduate students are uh, allowed to use instrument and we have instrumentation laboratory course. So they are they handle all sophisticated instrument. When we talk about research, so we have means Ashoka has very good program, independent study module where students can involve, uh, do independent re research or uh, some study and uh, get credits for it. So we have fourth year, we have 12 credits uh, research in Ashoka. Uh, under NEP. So these are the facilities. Chemistry department is involved in uh, various outreach activities. Seems like there is some uh, connection network issue. Uh, Professor Vidya, can you hear us? Okay, so maybe um, I'll um, request Professor Sushmita to come in and we'll uh, request uh, Professor Vidya to finish her presentation after the physics presentation. So um, uh, Sushmita, uh, can you hear me? Okay, so maybe we'll uh, talk about the offerings from the physics department and then get back to uh, the chemistry presentation. Uh, can you see my... Yes, slides? yes, yes. Perfect. Okay, uh, thank you, Yukti. And I really want to thank uh, Shivani and uh, Professor Vidya for giving this um, basic idea about Ashoka University. And I will now give a brief introduction with physics department. So as we know, like in our day-to-day -day life, we use physics every day. The electricity that we are having now, the internet that we are using now, everything is related to physics. So in Ashoka, the main thing, the first thing we try to in, in, uh, give the student is we offer the go course in such a way that it helps students creativity, independence, problem solving capability, and the critical thinking. All these are important to become a human, a good human being and a good physicist as well. Our undergraduate physics program that we have, it is a combination of traditional core undergraduate physics courses, like offered by other very famous universities. 
addition to this, we offer a number of elective courses or interdisciplinary courses, and students can uh, use take those courses and find the opportunity to work in interdisciplinary field as well. Uh, in this case, we not only provide them the theoretical knowledge, we also provide them the training and skills uh, in different in scientific fields and interdisciplinary fields as well. Uh, so actually here, first two semester, it is actually we give the students to allow to discover what is physics. Because when you come from school after your class 12, you, you have done only one physics course, you know, general physics, but physics has various branches. So first two semester, we give you the flavor so that you can see what is real physics and you can decide whether you want to continue physics as a major or not. And after that, followed by three semester, you learn actually the fundamental physics. In this case, you learn about classical mechanics, you learn quantum mechanics, statistical mechanics, and various uh, lab, laboratory-based courses also you do during this time. Now comes your last year, which is the fourth year and the final year. And this time you are you can do or you can select your advanced uh, research topic and you can take a particular branch and you can study about physics in more advanced level. So we inspire students to think like a physicist. We consider that when you are coming from school, you might not have proper idea about physics, but when you leave Ashoka University, you will be thinking like a physicist. And in this case, the main goal for us that we give them the direction, introduce them with different physics program and the way of thinking as well. So I have some photos picked from the students and in the lab so that you can see and these people are working in the lab. Like in the first photo here, you see these people are working in the astro lab and they are trying to uh, here to measure the length of a building which is present for the distance or here they're making assembling some instrument also. So now let's come to the department. So department has 11 faculty members, two postdoctoral fellows and 14 PhD students. Physics department is pretty new. It started in 2017. And we have 10 ASP students, uh, 18 undergrad, 12 undergrad third year, and we have three stops. The key research area that physics department has is the condensed matter physics. We do both experimental and theoretical condensed matter physics. We have it. Uh, we also have lots of research going on in astrophysics and astronomy. And then we have uh, professors working on quantum field theory and cosmology. So this is the faculties working in condensed matter physics. Uh, Okay, I will take the pointer. So he is, um, I just want to talk about little bit because Shivani mentioned about the COVID thing. So he is Professor Gautam Menon. He is our Dean Research. He is working in biophysics. Here I will say he is using physics and during COVID time, he developed a model about the spread of COVID and he is very famous for that. Uh, and then we have Professor Shomindra Mohan Bhattacharji and his research area is theoretical condensed matter physics and he is working on quantum phase transition, biophysics and variety of fields. She is Garima Mishla and she is a soft con uh, condensed matter physicist working in biophysics. These two, we are the experimental physicist. Pramod is working on soft condensed matter physics and I am working on experimental condensed matter physics, mainly magnetism. So these are the team from astrophysics and astronomy. So we have Professor Dipankar Bhattacharya. He is the head of the department and he is working on observational astronomy and theoretical astrophysics. We have Professor Kandaswamy Subramanian. His research interest is cosmic magnetism, structure formation in the universe. We have Professor Vikram Fukun and he is the Dean of Academic Affairs uh, and he is one of the founding member of the physics department. And we have Professor Shomak Rai Choudhury, and he is the vice chancellor of Ashoka University, and his research area is cosmology and astrophysics. And here we have 
Professor Shuratna and Professor Amin. Uh, they are, Shuratna is working on cosmology and Amin is working on quantum field theory. So you can see we have a variety of different, we cover different field of physics research wise. So in case of physics, co uh, physics uh, courses, we have core courses. These are the core courses. And then we have laboratory courses as well. And in every semester, there is one laboratory course present. And all the laboratory course you can see are based on the core courses. That means the main thing here I told that we want to skill the student and we want them to have proper uh, idea what is going on theory and experiment. So in every semester, whatever they learned in theory, they have a lab based on that topic. So we offer four lab courses. And then addition to this, we offer, offer advanced level elective courses. Like we offer GR cosmology, we offer electronics, soft matter physics, non-equilibrium statmic, quantum field theory, etc. And in our NEP four-year UG program is also com uh, properly uh, complementary to these courses. So recently, from last year, we have started Astronomy Minor. And in case of Astronomy Minor, these are the core courses. And then they also offered variety of uh, advanced level elective courses. So here, observing the cosmos is the lab-based course, and the physics of the universe is the theory-based course. These are the core course. And here we also offer variety of uh, elective courses. So here I have shown, like we have telescopes and here you can see the students. If there is a clear sky, uh, we take out our mm, telescope and we manage to see amazing, uh, we manage to do some stargazing. We have observed Dumbbell Nebula, Eagle Nebula, Ring Nebula. These are the photos taken by this telescope. So yeah, so this kind of things are going on. Uh, so addition to this, we have electronic lab courses, we have graduate lab courses, and as Professor Vidya mentioned, individual study module is very important where the UG students can pick one of the project and continue throughout the semester. We also have summer project and Ashoka scholar program on the ASP thesis on it. Addition to this, we have open lab day, these are the photos of astrophysics minor spring 2023. We have various professors coming from all over the world and giving lecture. Like here, Professor Shubhavati Goswami from PRL was giving a lecture in a physics colloquium, where here Professor Yen Shudras uh, gave a lecture in 2023. Actually, mm, yeah. And addition to this, we have various departmental activities. We have conference and workshop workshop going on. Last uh, last year, we have condensed matter conference. And then we have different lab visits. Students go to different lab and see that. Then we have Genius Week when uh, we invite people to come and give a talk. We have open lab day where that, and that day students are teaching other students. So it's an open lab day. You can come and you can see which ex experiments we have. Like there is a photo, one of our UG students explaining some experiment to others. We also have physics convocation and we have astronomy mixer where you can make your own model and you can try to explain it. And every week we have physics colloquium as well. <clears throat> uh, these are the physics labs. So we have two, three labs. One is, uh, these are the physics lab and we also have the dark room as well, which is very important for the physics. Uh, these are the research labs. So I told that Professor Pramod and me, we are the experimental physicists. These are the polarization microscope that Professor Pramod used. She is, he is working on liquid crystal and I am working on magnetic materials and magnetic properties uh, in magnetic nanostructures. And this is the magnet optical card microscope set up present in my lab. And we also have computational facilities as well. Uh, last, I want to show this is like not only that, we, we we believe in building things from scratch. So this is a horn antenna and this is built at Ashoka with uh, last summer under the supervision of Professor Dipankar, uh, Pradeep and other UG students, they built this horn antenna at Ashoka and now it is working and it 
if you join our astrophysics minor, you have to use this to take some amazing data. Last thing about my research. So as Yukti mentioned that I work on magnetic materials. So uh, you can consider there is a pond and you drop a stone on it. What will happen? There will be some wave create, right? So if I give you a magnetic material, say cobalt, nickel, or iron, and you hit it, or you somehow create some disturbance into it, you can see that the disturbance propagates in the form of wave. And this is known as spin wave. And this spin wave, when I is, is can it be used for low power consumption, because you know when current flows through a wire, you can see after a certain time, you can't touch the wire because it is heating up, right? This is called Zuli, Zuli heating because it is connected with the flow of electrons. But here, as it is connected with the flow of spins, we can minimize this Joule heating. And the goal of my research is to excite the spin wave at certain point of a material and then propagate the information modulated by the spin wave and transfer it to a further distance. This is an amazing structure I want to show. Uh, this is a Sarpensky carpet. And here we have shown that this kind of carpet could be used as spin wave filter. So for more details, definitely we can answer in question and answer session. Uh, lastly, uh, after doing the PhD, uh, after doing the you undergraduate from Ashoka. So till now we have three batch of students uh, like managed to uh, like man, uh, graduated from Ashoka and all of them are like most of them actually they are doing masters in different places uh, mainly in abroad and some of them are doing PhD as well like here you can see uh, it is almost all of them are doing something some people are actually uh, like here these people the diversity is working with a startup plan so yeah so this kind of uh, and now they are probably doing phd few of them like rashmi doing phd so yeah and this is the last batch and yeah you can see uh, they are like uh, at different places in our either in ashoka or in outside india they are working uh, and doing very well so, yeah, I would like to say, please come and join uh, physics department at Ashoka. And it is very interdisciplinary. And yeah, I will be happy to answer questions. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Sushmita. Again, I think that was quite informative. So thank you so much. I thank will you. now request um, Professor Vidya to maybe quickly wrap up uh, the presentation. I think we lost you in between due to some uh, uh, network yeah, issues. Yeah, yeah. So let's there quickly... Was the internet issue. So I'll just share the <clears throat> sure. I'll try and turn my camera off so that we save some bandwidth there. Yeah. I think I'll share PPT rather than screen. So that would be better. Okay. So tell me how is it clear to you? It is still loading. Yeah, yeah. I it's think yes. okay. Yes, we were just on the yeah. outreach okay. uh, slide right after this. So Ashoka University Chemistry Department is involved in a lot of outreach activities. So we, this is Yusuf Hamid Chemistry Camp. This uh, uh, is supported by Yusuf Hamid, Hamid uh, Trust. So RSC uh, UK. So you can see our cheerful chemistry volunteers who are involved in assisting uh, faculty in this Yusuf, uh, Yusuf Hamid Camp. So chemistry department here, uh, a lot of activities are involved and we have chemistry uh, society club also student organize different events so we also have international speakers in the department and we take our students to instrumental facilities at iit delhi sonipat campus so here you can see our students visiting sonipat campus and understand high end equipments we believe that uh, this uh, Benjamin Franklin quote, tell me, I forget, teach me, I remember, involve me, I learn. So we uh, believe in learning. So we involve our students in learning activities. So you can see my classroom where students are actually, uh, I'm teaching theory, but same time I'm showing them with experiments. So interactive learning is very, very important. And that is what we uh, do in chemistry department. So 
let us uh, learn chemistry today for sustainable tomorrow. So chemistry has real strength in making life sustainable to address most important problems of climate change, energy, uh, water. So chemistry can be uh, a very important subject to address all these problems. So thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Professor Vidya. Thank you so much for that informative uh, presentation. And we'll now quickly jump on to the question and answers round. And uh, we have a lot of questions pouring in already. So we'll start with uh, Professor Shivani. So uh, if you might just want to uh, talk about the advantages that Ashoka University offers for the UG programs. For instance, people are asking how is Ashoka's UG program better than the BSc Honours in Biology from any other institution uh, in the country. And since we talk a lot about interdisciplinarity and having uh, multiple majors and minors being offered, so can a student expect to acquire sufficient subject-specific knowledge in comparison to those pursuing uh, an honours degree uh, from anywhere else in the country? Thanks, Yukti. Yeah, so uh, to answer that question about uh, in-depth subject-specific knowledge, so as I've said, we have a set of core courses that are comparable to the curriculum across the world and within India. So these are sort of specific subjects. But if you go to a traditional college there you have, let's say, botany, zoology and chemistry, where you're sort of siloing fields within biology. And that doesn't happen here, where you're learning from, let's say, single cell to ecology. And this is uh, sort of specific to, let's say, a few ISOs and uh, a few other uh, liberal arts places, but not in other colleges. And that's something even the core courses do not cover the breadth that we cover. When we talk about depth, uh, definitely they do more electives in uh, specific areas. So as opposed to at Ashoka, students can sort of customize their electives. And since they minor in different areas, that allows them to bridge the knowledge in that minor uh, subject with the biology. Like I said, they could do electives such as neonatal development. If they want to go ahead and pursue neuroscience, this is a fantastic opportunity, which is not available in other places. They cannot choose combinations in the way that they can. So overall, what this structure does is it enables you to think critically and also think in depth about the specific subjects that you want to pursue. Yeah. Sure, sure, sure. Thank you. Thank you. So uh, my next question is uh, for Vidya, where someone is asking if uh, there are two questions, actually. Are there opportunities for the chemistry students to uh, engage in internships with the industry partners? And number two, what is the extent of undergraduates doing research in the uh, chemistry department? Do they have the flexibility to conceive their own project and then uh, do the experiments? Yeah, good question. Actually, <clears throat> industries, first question, I, I think you have asked industry internship, right? Yes. So there is a good opportunity in industry internship because if you see chemical industries, pharmaceutical industries, polymer industries, even sugar industries, you name any industry, chemistry is there. So students can definitely work in different industry depending upon their interest. And we, we are also in, uh, working with industries so that we can do some collaboration and student exchange program. So definitely it is quite possible for chemistry students. Second, you talked about uh, independent research. So uh, we are very much into research, entire chemistry department, faculty are publishing really good journals, working on hot areas and our undergraduate students, they are very keen in doing, <clears throat> doing research. So I have uh, four to five students who are doing independent study module with me because they are interested in doing, doing research and uh, they, they are in first year only so they have not chosen which subject they are going to do but they are interested so they want they want to try different subjects and then they can decide so uh, this is very interesting this is the strength of ashoka where students can do independent study module and uh, find out what they really want to do how they can uh, pro proceed with research in uh, uh, higher st studies so it's a uh, quite good program 
and student can get uh, industry experience as well as uh, research knowledge. Sure, sure. Thank you. Thank you. So um, my next question is for Sushmita. Uh, if you could talk about how does the university foster a collaborative and inter interactive learning environment in sciences? Uh, can students collaborate? I think all of you did touch upon this, but if you could elaborate this a little more. Can students collaborate with their peers across different departments to solve a research problem? Uh, yeah. Thank you, Yukti, for this wonderful question. Yes. I and the answer is yes, they can do it uh, because this is actually the advantage of liberal science university. You know, here we have the scientists and then we have people who has very good uh, art minded things. So, of course, there is a, always this collaboration things going on. Uh, like if I take an example, like few days ago, one student came and he was doing some experiment and he needs some electronics advice. So he came to me for this electronics advice, whereas his work is on psychology. Okay, so he was doing some uh, some fly sleeping things and that. So this kind of things always happened. And this is actually a good thing that we are always here and we are always ready to help as like as much as we can do, like from with computer science department, with physics, biology department, like I talked about Gautam's research, right? He is working on biophysics. So it is always possible to do this interdisciplinary work. And we always encourage the student to pursue such kind of uh, research area. Yeah. Thank, Thank you, you. Sushmita. Uh, since we are already talking about biophysics, there is a student who wants to learn more about uh, biophysics and bioinformatics that uh, Shivani mentioned in her presentation. And Shivani, actually, the there are two questions for you. One is if you could elaborate a little about what encompasses the biophysics and bioinformatics uh, domains. And the second is what are the best minors uh, you would suggest for a biology major? That's another okay. question from an audience member. Yeah. Thanks, Yukti. So I think uh, I'll first answer the minor question first. So uh, I mean, the both the traditional and the most useful minors would definitely my uh, first choice would be chemistry and physics. That's the ideal sort of uh, crosstalk that happens, right? But I mean, students are free to choose computer science and uh, we're living in an age where traditional careers might go extinct. So I think it's important to think outside the box and they can choose careers that are very different from what we've been doing. So computer science, I think, has been a very popular minor across uh, Ashoka. So we also have students who are uh, mainly doing minors in psychology, computer science, uh, a few students in chemistry, and we have a few in physics. So these are the most popular minors that students are taking. Uh, yeah. yeah. So with regards to biophysics, I think we have courses that are around biophysics. It means nothing but uh, physical principles that are involved in living organisms. So, for example, you can answer questions like what kind of forces occur in cells when organisms are developing, what kind of uh, forces uh, shape the cell structure, right? So some of these questions are dealt by biophysics. How do we understand the protein structure, which only if you know protein structure, you can sort of get to the function, right? So th some of these problems come under under the field of biophysics. And with regards to bioinformatics, it's one of the most popular tools used now in biology, where you look at sequences of DNA sequences or RNA sequences and try to uh, ask questions related to, uh, for example, uh, what are the genes that are being expressed at a given point of time? And how did this organism evolve? Did our, how humans are related to chimpanzees? So all this information requires you to understand understand bioinformatic tools. Sure. Thank you. Thank you so much, Shivani. Um, uh, yeah, Professor Vidya, actually, there are two, again, two subsequent questions for you. One is, how do you bridge the gap between school education and uh, Ashoka's curriculum? And second question is, how does university integrate lab experience into the chemistry curriculum? So both are around curriculum. How do you bridge the gap between the school curriculum and the uh, university curriculum? And how do you basically merge the lab and uh, the theory uh, 
in chemistry at Ashoka? Yeah, for this, we have some fundamental courses. Uh, so where you can learn fundamental science, it is actually just to know science better or know chemistry better. So we have some very basic courses. So we can bridge the gap, uh, learning gaps. And then uh, what was the other question? Uh, how do you, uh, how does the university integrate the lab experience into the chemistry curriculum? Yeah, in the industry lab experience into cu curricular. Lab Actually, experience in general. That oh, most sorry, uh, not really the industrial experience, but uh, the lab experience general. that they have. Achha, yes. Achha. Yeah, I got it. Yes. Yeah. Actually, chemistry, it's quite possible. Like what we study, we can do in the lab. Yeah. What okay. we study, we can do uh, that in the lab. So what are chemical reactions we study in, in theory classes, we can perform that in the lab. Like if you, if you are, we, if we are showing polymer uh, synthesis, we can really synthesize polymer in the lab. So if you are uh, teaching drug uh, drugs, uh, making of medicinal medicines, we can synthesize those medicines in lab. We, we, if we are teaching catalyst, uh, synth uh, discussing catalysis, we can really see that catal uh, catalysis uh, synthesis in the lab. So what we do, we can really see in the chemistry lab and that is how we can enjoy uh, learning. So chemistry has different experience where we can, what you we learn, we see. Yeah, thank you. And I think I should yeah. add that this is not really the scenario at a lot of other places. What you do in theory is something else. And what you do in the lab is, uh, I think, 10, 15 years old uh, generalized reactions. Yeah. And you really don't right. get to get that hands-on training and experiential training what yeah. uh, are there in the latest li in the literature. You really don't get to do a lot of those things. So mm. thank you so much for that. So uh, my next question is uh, for Sushmita. If you could talk about uh, uh, opportunities that the undergraduate students at Ashoka have to, uh, do they get an opportunity to spend a summer or a semester abroad at various partnering universities or institutions? And if yes, what are the prerequisites for participating in such programs? Uh, so, uh, like Ashoka has signed MOU with various universities, and those universities really offered the summer project. So, as a student, then uh, here they need to apply for those summer internship. And the prerequisite sometimes depends on which field they are applying for. Most of the time, they need some reference letter or recommendation letter from the professors that we are happy to help them with those things. And like last year, two students, um, Shweta and Kushal, they were in US and they were doing summer internship there. So definitely they can go abroad and do the summer internship there. Uh, but I just want to mention that uh, at Ashoka, in physics department, we always encourage students to do various summer projects, not only on abroad. It is It could be within Ashoka, within India, anywhere. Within India also, like there are lots of summer internship program going on where they need to apply for it and they can go and spend three months there because three months is a very good time to have the research experience and like that. So definitely we have and like till now, like I, yeah, so like most of our students are doing summer internship either in Ashoka, outside India, within India. Yeah, sure, yeah, that sure, is sure. possible. Sure. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we are actually again running out of time, but if you have like five minutes more, we can just take one round of questions for each of you and then uh, we'll conclude. Sure. Thank you. Um, so uh, Shivani, somebody is asking, I aspire to become a biology educator after completing my degree. Could you please suggest the best pathway for me and how Ashoka can assist me in achieving this uh, goal? Yeah, thanks, Yukti. Yeah, it's a nice question. And uh, so I think I'm assuming what they mean by educator is either a teacher or a, it depends on which level of education, but uh, something related to teaching field, right? So uh, we also, what happens in Ashoka is we offer undergraduate students an opportunity to work as teaching assistants. 
So this provides them valuable experience on how to handle or how to uh, teach in a classroom. They deal with small discussion sessions. They teach small topics that sort of primes them to feel at least that, you know, whatever they have gained. So these are usually senior students who are teachers for a few months in that semester. And they are very happy. And this uh, most students have said that this experience has really helped them to sort of be on the other side and also think how uh, a teacher thinks or how one should teach certain things, right? So uh, I think that's one way where Ashoka can really help or uh, especially who are interested in going there would can take up more opportunities of being teaching assistants. Sure, sure, sure. Thank you. Also, I just like want to add that physics department also offers such teaching, teaching assistantships for the students, UG students. Okay. Thank you. Uh, maybe I'll uh, ask one last question. Um, uh, this is for Shivani and then we'll move on to chemistry. So somebody is asking if they can pursue a, a career in neuroscience after completing an undergraduate degree from Ashoka. Yeah. So, uh, I, so neuroscience again leads to multiple careers. So uh, a lot of students are interested in pursuing a career in neuroscience. We have uh, who have moved on, done biology, BSc biology major, done a psychology minor, and then they went on to do a master's in neuroscience. And they've also received Erasmus Mundus Fellowship, uh, a couple of them. And after that, some of them have gone on to do PhD or they've sort of moved to clinical side where they've become counselors. So it depends on which side of neuroscience one is interested in, but definitely we offer many electives that would sort of, they can plan their trajectory towards neuroscience. Yeah. Sure. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, Professor Vidya, uh, if you could also talk about how the chemistry department evaluates the students and also what's the ratio of like how is the uh, timetable divided in terms of how much time a student spends in uh, theory class versus that in the lab. So somebody wants to know more about that. Oh, yeah. So uh, 60, 40, you can say... 40% lab and 60% uh, theory because you, fundamental learning is important. So that is why more weightage is given to theory. But uh, since ASP is there, whoever is interested in doing more practical, ex uh, having hands-on exper experience on practical, they can ob obviously go for ISM and have more experience or can do internships in department or other institutes. So we uh, that opportunity is always there. Okay. <laughs> Okay, thank you. Um, Sushmita, this question is specific to your research. I really don't know how to pronounce the name of the carpet that you had shown towards uh, the end. Yeah, but, Sarpinsky carpet. Yes, so somebody is asking why is it so efficient? And then I'll have a subsequent question for you. Maybe you can answer that first. Uh, so this is very interesting question. Uh, so the thing is, you can see Sarpinsky carpet is a fractal. That means it did not have a short range periodicity, but it has a long range periodicity. And this is the thing that we want to use in our measurement. That is the reason it is unique than others. Like in general, if I have a square, periodic square, it is a periodic square. And this is an aperiodic square. So, and it is a fractal. So that is the reason of it. Uh, yeah, and... Uh, what is the subsequent question? Yeah, the subsequent question is, uh, is it possible to go, it's it's a general career question, somebody wants to know, is it possible to go on to do a PhD in physics after four years of UG program? Yes, according to new NEP, you can do that, actually. Uh, if you do four years and then you can directly apply for PhD. Yes, but according to new NEP. Uh, Till I think Ashoka ASP program, you have to do one year's master's and then you can do PhD. Sure, sure, sure. Thank you so much. I think in the interest of time, I would like to wrap this up, although there are a lot more questions. But in case we need some answers from you, we'll get back to you and we'll respond to the audience members uh, separately. So on that note, thank you so much, Professor Shivani, Professor Vidya and Professor Sushmita for joining us today and sparing time uh, for this uh, discussion. And I will now request uh, the audience member to please take a minute to share your valuable feedback with us.
the link to the feedback form is now provided in the chat box and kindly note that the recording of this session will be available on Ashoka's YouTube channel. So please feel free to share it with your friends and anyone who might uh, need it. Uh, our next webinar is scheduled on uh, 15, 16th of February, which is a Friday next week at 6 p.m. It will be focusing on uh, economics at Ashoka and Professor Anisha Sharma, uh, she will be the speaker for this session and she'll be talking to students and she'll be taking uh, the audience through the economics program at Ashoka which is one of the largest departments also. Uh, the registration say, a link for the same is now provided in the chat box. And last few pointers before we wrap up today's session, I would like to reiterate that round three applications for the undergraduate program are now open and the deadline for this is 12th of April. You can secure your admission uh, without class 12 board marks or CUET. So if you have any further queries regarding this, please feel free to write to us at ugapply at ashoka.edu.in. And you can contact, uh, else you can contact with us on the same number that's given on the screen. And on that note, I would once again like to thank our speakers for taking time out to participate in this discussion. And this brings us to the end of the session. Please